the bodybuilding world is made up of less budding friendships like Arnold Schwarzenegger and Franco Colombo, and more of rivalrous hate dynamics. This video is a testament to the same. One who excels. Steve Reeves was an American bodybuilder and actor who rose to fame in the 1950s and 60s. Born on January 21, 1926, in Glasgow, Montana, Reeves grew up on a farm and developed a passion for sports and fitness from an early age. He excelled in track and field and football in high school, but it was his interest in bodybuilding that would eventually make him a household name. Reeves began weight training at the age of 16 and quickly became fascinated by the process of building muscle mass and strength. He studied the works of famous bodybuilders, such as John Grimmick and George Eiferman, and began to develop his own unique approach to training. He focused on a combination of weightlifting and body weight exercises, aiming to build a proportionate physique with well-defined muscles. In 1946, Reeves won his first bodybuilding competition, the Mr. Pacific Coast Contest, and went on to win several more titles over the next few years, including Mr. America, Mr. World, and Mr. Universe. He became known for his impressive physique with broad shoulders, a narrow waist, and well-defined muscles. He was also admired for his classic bodybuilding style, which emphasized symmetry and proportion over sheer size and mass. More Opportunities Reeves' success in bodybuilding opened up new opportunities for him in the entertainment industry. He moved to Hollywood in the late 1940s and began to pursue a career in acting. He appeared in several low-budget films, but it was his portrayal of Hercules in the 1958 film Hercules that made him a star. The film was a box office success, and Reeves' chiseled physique and good looks earned him a legion of fans around the world. Over the next few years, Reeves starred in several more films, including The Giant of Marathon, The Trojan Horse, and The Thief of Baghdad. He was known for his roles in historical and mythological epics, where his muscular physique and imposing presence were well-suited to playing legendary heroes and warriors. He also became a popular sex symbol, with his handsome face and sculpted body making him a favorite of both male and female fans. Reeves' success in both bodybuilding and acting helped to popularize the sport of bodybuilding and inspire a generation of fitness enthusiasts. He wrote several books on fitness and nutrition, including Building the Classic Physique the Natural Way and Dynamic Muscle Building. He also made appearances on television shows such as The Ed Sullivan Show and The Tonight Show, where he demonstrated his impressive strength and physical prowess. Despite his fame and success, Reeves remained humble and dedicated to his craft. He continued to train and work out throughout his life, even after retiring from acting in the 1960s. He remained an advocate for natural, drug-free bodybuilding and believed that anyone could achieve a strong, healthy physique with the right training and nutrition. Sadly, Steve Reeves passed away on May 1, 2000 at the age of 74. The Other Legend Mike Menser was an American bodybuilder and author who rose to fame in the 1970s and 80s. Born on November 15, 1951, in Ephrata, Pennsylvania, Menser developed a passion for bodybuilding at a young age and quickly became known for his innovative training methods and impressive physique. Menser began weight training in his early teens and quickly discovered a talent for bodybuilding. He began competing in local contests and quickly made a name for himself as a promising young athlete. He soon began to develop his own unique approach to training, which focused on high-intensity workouts with heavy weights and low reps. In 1976, Menser won the Mr. America and Mr. Universe titles, cementing his status as one of the top bodybuilders in the world. He was known for his massive, well-defined muscles and his intense, no-nonsense approach to training. He also became famous for his association with his younger brother, Ray, who was also a successful bodybuilder. Menser's success in bodybuilding opened up new opportunities for him in the fitness industry. He began to write articles and books on fitness and nutrition, including Heavy Duty Nutrition and Heavy Duty 2 Mind and Body. He also began to work as a personal trainer, coaching clients in his unique high-intensity approach to weightlifting. Menser's training methods were controversial at the time, as they went against the traditional bodybuilding approach of high-volume workouts with lighter weights. He believed that by pushing oneself to the limit with heavy weights and low reps, one could achieve maximum muscle growth in a shorter period of time. He also emphasized the importance of rest and recovery, believing that the body needed time to heal and rebuild after intense workouts. Menser's approach to training drew both admiration and criticism from the bodybuilding community. Some saw him as a visionary who was pushing the sport to new heights, while others saw him as a dangerous radical who was promoting unsafe training practices. Nevertheless, Menser remained dedicated to his principles and continued to promote his unique approach to weightlifting and bodybuilding. Sadly, Mike Menser passed away on June 10, 2001 at the age of 49. Menser's influence on the fitness industry can still be felt today, 
as his ideas and philosophy continue to shape the way that people approach strength training and muscle building. He was a true innovator in the field of bodybuilding and fitness, and his contributions to the sport will be remembered for many years to come. Reason for Animosity Reeves, Mr. America and Mr. Universe winner, discovered that he and Mike Menser had a lot in common when it came to bodybuilding training, in addition to being one of the greatest and possibly the last of the natural bodybuilders of all time. During his competitive days, Reeves would perform up to nine sets per body part while Mike only performed four to six. Both, however, supported increasing the intensity, not the duration of their efforts in the gym, and believed in performing considerably fewer sets than the majority of bodybuilders. In fact, both men believed that exercising for 20 sets per body part was a waste of time and that working out more than three days a week was counterproductive since the body would not have enough time to relax. Nevertheless, they did not always choose the same training methods. Steve Reese and Mike Menser were two influential figures in the world of bodybuilding, both with their own unique perspectives on how to achieve maximum muscle growth and strength. While both men were proponents of high-intensity training, they had fundamentally different views on how it worked and how it should be implemented. Firstly, it's important to understand what high-intensity training is. In simple terms, high-intensity training involves performing a small number of sets with a high level of intensity, using heavy weights and pushing the muscles to failure. This type of training is often contrasted with the more traditional approach of performing multiple sets of an exercise with moderate weights and taking longer rests between sets. Mike Menser was a strong advocate of high-intensity training and believed that it was the most efficient and effective way to build muscle mass and strength. He believed that traditional bodybuilding routines were not effective because they relied on high volume, which he claimed resulted in overtraining and poor results. Instead, he argued that by performing fewer sets with a high level of intensity, you could stimulate muscle growth more effectively. Steve Reese, on the other hand, disagreed with Menser's approach. Reese believed that while high-intensity training was an effective way to build muscle, it wasn't the only way. He argued that there was no one-size-fits-all approach to training and that what worked for one person might not work for another. Furthermore, he believed that training should be tailored to an individual's goals, strengths, and weaknesses. Reese also had concerns about the potential risks of high-intensity training. He believed that the high-intensity approach carried a greater risk of injury, particularly for novice lifters who might not have the proper technique or experience. He also believed that high-intensity training could be more physically and mentally demanding than other forms of training, which could lead to burnout and decreased motivation. One of the key differences between Menser and Reese was their approach to training frequency. Menser believed that training should be done with a low frequency, meaning that you would perform each exercise only once a week. This was based on the belief that the body needed more time to recover from the high-intensity workouts. Reese, on the other hand, believed that training frequency should be tailored to an individual's recovery abilities. He argued that some people could handle more frequent training, while others needed more time to recover. Reese also believed in the importance of variety in training. According to him, by using different exercises, sets, and rep ranges, you could keep the muscles guessing and prevent plateauing. This was in contrast to Menser's belief that a limited number of exercises should be used and that the focus should be on increasing the intensity of those exercises over time. That's all for this video, folks. See you next time.